Mr. Lebrecht, thank you very, very much once again for giving us the honor uh, to receive you here at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, a wonderful keynote address that you just delivered as part of our conference. We'd love to use this opportunity now to ask you a few follow-up questions, uh, in particular with this debate on multiculturalism, integration, and beyond. Mm -hmm. If I may, my colleagues have some questions as well, but if I may, I'd like to ask the first question, uh, multiculturalism. Uh, does this in some way pose a threat uh, to national identity uh, in terms of Germany? Uh, I think in Germany very often we speak of integration. Uh, my question is, integrate into what? Uh, is it clear what it means to be German? Uh, is there some sort of a contradiction with multiculturalism and, and national identity, in your opinion? Well, well, first of all, I see it as an extremely positive side for a society to have uh, as, uh, as much also uh, international or uh, foreign uh, influence in society. This, however, is uh, maybe my, uh, also my, my personal view because I have lived in, was born in the United States, but I grew up in Germany, you can tell from my accent. <laughs> and, uh, but I was back and forth and my parents made sure that I could travel the world and, and see numerous places. Um, but that is not, um, not always the case uh, with people in Germany. There's a lot of reservation concerning foreigners in Germany. Things have improved over the last years tremendously. Just this morning on the radio, I uh, heard an uh, interesting report. Uh, it has just been 20 years ago that there were riots in, uh, in uh, former East Germany. It was, Germany was already re reunited, but uh, people were afraid of foreigners. We had a, a lot of uh, political asylum, uh, asylum <laughs> people. Um, and um, and uh, so uh, these, the, 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 the homes were burned down, and, and there was, it was a horrible situation. And um, this has, uh, I think a lot has improved. I think it's important that uh, foreigners fully integrate into society. In Germany, we had made many problems when uh, Germany was rebuilt after the war. We asked many people to come from other countries to help us to build Germany. Many from it Italy, Spain, Portugal, especially from Turkey. And the original idea, which was wrong from the beginning, was that uh, you ask the people to come and do the job, and once the job is done, they should go home. <laughs> well, these people, they're, 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 Germany became their home. They're, they they founded their families there. There were often young people who were s searching for a job, and, um, and, and they started their families, <laughs> but uh, they, they really didn't learn German, the German language. It was not the idea that they would learn German. It's, uh, uh, looking back, we should have started totally different. We should have asked these people, come to Germany, also learn the language. You will uh, feel much more welcome once you uh, can communicate with the people there. Um, and, and still today, you would find first generation, for example, Turks in Germany, they still don't uh, speak good German. And, they, and, then they, and then they live in a kind of a ghetto situation. They have never been fully integrated. And even second and third generation Turks sometimes don't feel as, as, as a part of the German society, also they are, they are Germans. They are born in Germany, they have a German citizenship and all that. And still, um, uh, another problem in Germany is that we, integration does not always work because we are very reluctant with dual citizenships. I don't understand it. I have a dual citizenship. <coughs> I have a German and American passport. And uh, also there were years where I think that was not possible. I just kept quiet and kept it. <coughs> uh, today it's, it's, it's all legal and fine. But, um, but I feel a little embarrassed with a country which, which our, our wealth in the country, our uh, the richness and, and our strong economy depends on, on the world market, on, on people worldwide buying our goods. Uh, and and uh, so I was, uh, I'm always a bit sad if I see kind of anti uh, uh, Ausländerfeindlichkeit <laughs> in Germany. As I said, things are improving maybe a bit too slow and we now make sure <coughs> that every kid going into into Grundschule, that they, they, they know the German language and all that and that, and we try to integrate also uh, Turkish women more into German society. Step by step, it takes a long time. Germany could have learned a lot from America, from the United States, but also deal a lot with Canada, that Canada is even a even more positive <laughs> a society where full integration works. 
Allow me to ask maybe just a follow-up question to that. You made reference... There was a bit of long answer, but uh, no, I, think yeah. I thought it was important just no, to def mention. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. And I just wanted to ask a follow-up question. You referred to the Turkish diaspora in uh, Germany. I've been here about 10 years uh, in Germany, and I've mm -hmm. had the chance to observe there many debates, uh, primarily from a Turkish diaspora, not only regarding Islam, uh, in terms of this you know, possible contradiction that there is or some sea between Islam and Germany. Do you see challenges there when one speaks of integration multiculturalism? Uh, can one have... Uh, really is Islam and Islamic communities within Germany given the, the infrastructure that there is. Now there was this famous book from Saracen of course recently which was very controversial and I, I would consider really racist in some ways but what is your view on that in terms of really Islam and German identity? Well um, as I mentioned before German Germans often are at first a bit reluctant with with foreign things <laughs> but once you you integrate them you explain it to them they are very open to it um, for example, I come from the southern part of Germany near Stuttgart, and I think there's, in, in most larger villages in, in all cities, in, in, in medium-sized cities, but even larger villages, they, they have, have, uh, have now their um, um, uh, the churches, the, the, uh, no, mosques. the mosques, mosques, sorry, the mosques, and, and, and also maybe there have been some protests before. But once the mosque were there, and then the, the Germans could uh, go there and see it, and they have uh, open houses. And there are, and, and, and then things are much much more positive. Okay. Also, there are, I mean, uh, there are uh, Muslims in Germany who are maybe too um, too extreme, and uh, and and support uh, ideas which uh, are against uh, our values, <laughs> our ideas of values and of a free society. Uh, but I think we have to openly discuss it with them, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, also make sure that uh, Muslims have the full access to whatever uh, uh, church or Islamic uh, movement they want. Not the extreme ones, but there are differences as well. It's the same like with the Catholic Church and the, uh, in, in the Lutheran churches. You have, you have, you have different, different approaches and ways and, uh, uh, and uh, not to um, uh, kind of put young Muslims in a, in a, in a, in a schablon where they can't get out anymore. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, Muslims have to fully integrate in the German society. They have to accept that uh, uh, we, uh, we live in a free society and that the, uh, the Sharia is not the basis for our politics. <laughs> and, uh, and they have to accept it. And uh, I think immigration also means that we, are, we, we should be more tolerant, yes. Mm -hmm. But the Muslims also have to accept the, the society we live in and, and our uh, uh, constitution. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think if, that, if these two sides um, work together, then, then we will be uh, better off. That actually uh, a mistake, perhaps, uh, that we have committed on both sides, with Turkey as a sending country and Germany as a receiving country, is that we did not see the dimensions of the problem at the beginning. And even at a later stage, when there, were, there was some uh, extremist Muslims from Turkey in Germany, who established an, an association to revive Sharia and the and the Khilafe, Khalifa. Turkish authorities tried to draw the attention of the German authorities that these people are doing the wrong things because they they want to go back to the Prophet Muhammad's time. At that time, German authorities did not think that this could constitute a threat to the society, and they regarded this as a part of the uh, non-violent expression of, of uh, opinion, and they let these societies be active, and also uh, train themselves and, uh, and perhaps become, produce more fundamentalists. It's only after the 9-11, uh, the attack to the Twin Towers, that Germany started to see that this may constitute a danger for the German society, but beyond it for the international community. So at that time, it was regarded as something that uh, they could put pressure on Turkey by using these elements by the German authorities. Later on, it turned out that uh, it was more complicated than this. And now uh, I think we are at the same wavelength with Germany. Turkish government and the German government are at the same wavelength 
on the possible dangers that they put on the uh, German society and uh, in the international society. These people, uh, some of them are in jail now in Germany, but it took uh, more than a decade to make this uh, understood to, to the German authorities. So I want to open a parenthesis here to complement what you said. Well, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Yakesh. My colleagues have also prepared some questions, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, we slightly touched upon the topic of values, and um, therefore I wanted to know, um, is there a requirement for Western democratic values to change in order to incorporate multicultural values? And um, I also wanted to know, um, is the trend of multiculturalism a process that is developing, or is it dead? Um, what is your view? Um, to start with the latter one, I, I, I only hope that it's, uh, it's uh, only the start <coughs> of uh, multiculturalism. Um, uh, I think it's uh, very enriching for society to allow other cultures to, to influence uh, your own one. Um, uh, and, and that has always been the case. I mean, Europe, uh, Germany, for example, was not a, a Germany as you had it, as you see it today. If you go back uh, hundreds of, you know, in our history, Germany was before lots of little kingdoms and before tribes and all that. And, and without the influence, often the source of the influence was maybe negative, was a war or, or the, the part of Germany was conquered by, 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 by other um, societies and cultures. But, uh, but looking back, what you see uh, as Germany today is a great mix of influences from not only all over Europe, but even further. I mean, uh, or, or even from the Eastern European side and, and from Turkey and so on. When we had over, decay, over centuries, we had a lot of influence. And, um, and then we had a time, I mean, it was the, the, the Nazi period where there was a kind of a, uh, how do you say, a, you know, you had to have this racism German things, you know, that uh, only the, the white is a good German and, 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 and no Jewish influence and all, all this, these horrible things, uh, which was uh, until then not, not, uh, not German politics or, or not what the, what the Germans felt about it. <laughs> and uh, um, I think and it was good that we got, <laughs> got rid of that system. Um, unfortunately, it also um, uh, led to a horrible war. Um, but, uh, but on the other side, uh, there was a there was a great chance that Germany would have been a little more open-minded <coughs> to um, and and uh, and really avoid um, um, such a politics and, and and be more open. But somehow, Germans we we, we take a little longer <laughs> to uh, really accept uh, more influence from other cultures. So um, uh, I'm I mean we have we have parties like the Green Party, so they are very very open to it. Uh, I think my party is also quite quite tolerant. But there are others who are still a bit bit too reluctant. And they say, well, uh, uh, we, we have to follow a, uh, a basic kind of German culture. But what is a German culture? I mean, we have, we have, we have histories and we have, we have certain culture, but I think it should be dynam a dynamic process. And uh, with the demographic problem we have in Germany, with a decreasing uh, number of people living in our, in our country, we don't produce to enough children in Germany. Not me, I have four, but others have not so many. Uh, and I think it's... Uh, uh, important. We, we need we need a lot. We need more foreigners in Germany to to run our economy, <laughs> to be also consumers in our economy. As I said, I come from from southern Germany. It's a car builder industry, the machinery builders. We are desperately searching for high skilled labor for for engineers. We need them from all over the world, <laughs> and not uh, we, because we don't produce them ourselves. We don't produce enough, and uh, and that is important. And they will come if they feel welcome here, <laughs> and, and and then they think well. Germany is a nice country to live in, and people uh, want me to come. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, and I think there's still a, some way to go, but as I said before, it's, I'm, I'm positive it, it will change, and, uh, and we are on, 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 on a good, good road here. <laughs> yeah, thank you, and uh, you mentioned also your own party. Um, could you also explain um, maybe like some current projects? or? Um, yeah. yeah, well, first of all, um, our uh, party is, uh, we are very uh, non-state non, non oriented, we are more like a free, free economy and we say okay the state must provide certain basis for education and for the economy and security but should not influence you know from, from, 
uh, you know, influence all, all, all aspects of your life. And here we are in, in contrary with other parties who want more state influence. Everything should be organized by the state and all the, 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 the welfare and all that. Um, so we feel that uh, immigration uh, should be, um, uh, where we, the framework for it should be, uh, should come from the government, but it only works if you if you if you uh, start immigration in, in 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 the communes in the towns in the villages locally you cannot organize it from from berlin <laughs> you can give some guidelines you maybe can help financing some of these programs but immigration and we are very uh, a federal we are a federal state so when it comes for example to education it has to do also with our history that uh, we don't want a, a centralized system we have uh, 16 different kind of schooling systems Sometimes they're compatible, sometimes not so good. But, uh, but the idea is that, that each stage organizes its, its own idea of, of, of education. And when it comes to Im immigration and, and, and to building also tolerance, I think it has a lot to do with, I with education. Uh, it, has to be, it, it has to start in the kindergarten and in the schools and uh, also in the families. But often enough, unfortunately, um, there are families who uh, who do not teach that tolerance to their children. So I think it's uh, the, the society must step in and, and, and help at least, give, at least give the kids a chance uh, so that, that they can widen their horizon. Thank you. Um, so moving back to the relationship uh, with the United States, uh, the question, my question would be, um, speaking as a coordinator for transatlantic relations in the German Foreign Office and also as a US citizen, um, how do you see the development of the transatlantic relationship in light of President Obama's re-election? Would you consider that the re-election of President, uh, that the President is a good ambassador for multiculturalism? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, as he himself kind of uh, represents uh, um, uh, what is, uh, the, 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 the black people in, in his country, and. Um, and that I think it's a great uh, sim symbol, as, symbol as well that that uh, black American, African American, has become a uh, president in the United States. Uh, the next step should be maybe a woman should become uh, a president, and uh, so that uh, just want to say that uh, color shouldn't make really any any difference. Uh, but um, but when it uh, uh, so, and, and, and talking about transatlantic relations, for me, I, I'm, I'm very happy that, that Obama is, is back in office, uh, is, is uh, re-elected. Uh, also, I, I would have thought that um, uh, Mitt Romney would, would also be someone who has interest in transatlantic relations. Uh, from uh, what I have heard from him, I have not met him personally, but <coughs> on his speeches, I mean, he's not, he's not such an uh, international person here, but he lived in France. And he knows about the importance of, um, of Europe, and uh, he's not so keen on this Asian pivot. So from our point of view, that, that would have helped too. But, um, but um, again, on, we know uh, Obama so, so far, he's a reliable and a good friend to us. And, uh, and we, we are happy that he's, he's there for another four years and he doesn't have to face another election so he can fully concentrate in solving problems. And we know that many of his ideas he couldn't come through because there was uh, a blockade, a political blockade, which is unfortunate. And I hope that things are uh, moving faster now and, and to solve this problem. And if, if this, uh, uh, if you cannot raise the debt ceiling, and uh, no, no one wants to have more debts, but on the other side you have to pay your civil servants, your army and all that. Um, I think it's important that uh, the opposition, the uh, Republicans, will also uh, be a little more helpful. And I, th I think they will, I think, from, from what I, I, at least I, I hope. So, uh, transatlantic relations, I think, are, are, are good. And also, for example, uh, we Germans did not uh, um, uh, vote for, for this uh, intervention in, in, in Libya, in, in NATO. Um, we, but we explained it to the uh, to the Americans, and um, Obama was, by the way, also very reluctant at first, <laughs> and uh, and then he went, went. But but I mean the America, uh, the the French and the you know, the British together, they they could solve it, and we did support it a lot, also with with financial means, but also with with, with military uh, stuff, and um, um, at the end at the end it, it worked out, <laughs> but. Uh, um, uh, and, and, and looking back, as it's not, not a problem anymore. Germany is considered to be a most reliable 
partner in NATO as well. Mr. Leibrecht, we were told before during your introduction that you're the managing director at Schiller International University. Mm -hmm. So it focuses on exchange between Germany and the United States. Mm -hmm. Do you consider this um, method of cultural diplomacy a good model for future leaders mm -hmm. in their efforts to support a multicultural society? Yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm not the managing director anymore. It is uh, so. Uh, uh, be because the uh, the school used to be in uh, uh, my, my father actually started it <laughs> many years ago and and the idea is was to bring at first uh, Americans and Germans together but later it became a very international school he was professor at, at Harvard but also at uh, um, Northwestern University and at, at others and then uh, he decided that uh, the family comes back to Germany and he wants to um, uh, give Americans it was in the, in the early 60s <laughs> long ago uh, the chance to learn more about uh, about Europe and Germany, and uh, but the school developed very fast and became very international. So um, I think at the moment they have I think students from 130 countries, so it's worldwide. Um, in general, maybe still a third Americans, a third Europeans, third rest of the world. But nevertheless, uh, uh, when I see uh, look at our uh, study centers, there are, there are students from from all over the world, and I myself joined part of my studies, I spent there as well, and had, uh, when I was in London, I, um, I had uh, school uh, friends, uh, mates from, from all over the world, and a lot of Arab countries. Um, it was a time when uh, there was a war between Iran and Iraq, and, 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 and you know, you, you talk to your friends, Iraqi, and one from Iran, and, and they were friends, I said, well, we are brothers, but uh, more or less, and uh, suddenly there was this war, um, uh, or there was... Uh, uh, lots of, uh, you know, every day more or less there's a crisis somewhere in the world. And if you study together, or you're a group like this, and you discuss it very personally, then you know that, uh, for example, um, also there is the threat with Iran with the nuclear program, and it's horrible. Uh, but if you have friends also in Iran and in, in Israel, and, and I have been to both countries, and I know how, how people you know, how they are, Tehran, for example, a, a huge city, a young city, a young society. I mean, I would be most horrified <coughs> if there would be a bombing there. On the, on the, on the other side, I, I know how, how, how much the Israelis fear uh, this bomb. And not only Israel, we as well, with the new missile systems uh, the, the Iranians have, it's not just a local issue anymore. I mean, this, these missiles, they, they, they reach Europe now. <coughs> so it's a, it's, it's a question which concerns all of us. But it still today helps me that I had, that I always, you know, when I talk about these countries, I still see my friends, my, my, my Iranian friend, my Israeli friend, my Palestinian friend as well. <coughs> we had uh, a student and an and, and not and, and, and Arab um, and, and Asian world, and, and, and it makes all the difference. So programs like this is, which uh, not only um, uh, boost uh, understanding for each other, but, but, but also creates the tolerance we also need in politics. And uh, we, must, we must always avoid nationalism. That's, that's the start of, of the big, biggest problems. Uh, the world is getting closer. Globalization brings us so close together that an issue somewhere in the world is also our issue today. And, uh, and, it's, and, and I think that is important. And, uh, when I studied international business, but I always took also minors in, in international relations. And I think that was... Studying in, in, in international schools was for me the, the start of, of being interested in politics. Before that, I mean, I was always, you know, I, I read the newspapers or so, but politics was not a professional goal. And for, the, and for many years I worked in business or in the university. Um, but, I, but when I came back from England to Germany, because I met all the students, my, my friends from all over the world, I said, well, these politicians have influenced my life so much. <coughs> so I better become a politician myself as well. So I, I, I can influence at least you know, part of it myself as well. And not just complain what they do, but be part of it. And, uh, and, and from the beginning, when I became member of the parliament in 2002, they, they, they give you three choices. They said, in which committee do you want to work? One, two, three. And in all three, I said, um, foreign affairs committee. <coughs> they said, Harold, you are, you are new and young. and. Uh, this is not the usual case. Normally, the old buddies, they go to the foreign. I said, no, I, I think it's important that 
Also for a small country like Germany, <coughs> it's that we keep good relations with the world and that we do promote understanding and, um, and, uh, and, and I want to do this. And so at the end, I ended up in the Foreign Affairs Committee until uh, just uh, the last election because uh, Good friend of mine, he became the Minister of Economic Cooperation and, and, and Development during Nebel, and he called me that night when he heard that he would become the minister, and he had no clue about international politics. He said, Harold, I need your help. <laughs> so uh, uh, now I'm, I'm doing more um, uh, development, work with developing countries. But to tell you the truth, in the Foreign Affairs Committee, you meet all the big guys and the, and, and all the big leaders of the world and so on. But if you really want to change something, the, go also in the developing countries. It's wonderful. <laughs> That's whatever you do, you immediately see an immediate, often positive effect. And that is what uh, it's, uh, uh, that is wonderful. And I love it. And uh, so it, it, it helped me again. I think groups like this uh, create tolerance and you must talk with each other a lot and learn about all these new countries and, uh, and be open-minded. I've learned, you know, before that I always thought, you know, Germany is the center of the world. <coughs> you know, how, that's how, how, how one grows up and say, well, it's the most wonderful country. But if you go abroad, you suddenly see, well, Germany is nice and interesting, but it's a small spot in the world. <laughs> and there are bigger powers. And, uh, and, and, and then you talk to Muslims, for example. And you always think, you know, our religion is the best and, and, and most tolerant and so. But if you hear how they think and how they tick, suddenly you, this, you, you try to... to to, to, to feel like, like him or her and say, well, they have their views too <laughs> and, and, and they're good points. And uh, but maybe I do not agree to all of them, but I have to accept that they think that way. And I should never try to, when I, we, through debates, we can you know, try to change their, 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 their point of view, but, uh, but, but never by force. <laughs> and um, I think that's also a tolerant society must, uh, must be strong enough to to really also tolerate um, other, other influence as well. Okay. Short question, long answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, you're a member of the Committee of Foreign Education and Culture and also a member of uh, the German uh, Arabic League. Hmm? Um, and you already mentioned uh, some examples um, to successfully integrate immigrants. Could you al also give some examples of concrete policies uh, which have been introduced in an effort to successfully integrate immigrants from other countries? Uh, into German society? Well, first, the, um, the committee you mentioned that is the, for uh, international and, and um, uh, educational and cultural affairs. Okay. That is what Germany does outside of Germany. We have our own um, cultural committee within the, um, the, the Bundestag, our parliament, which deals only with internal questions. And they do, they do a lot, all these, uh, the, these projects. But our idea of, for example, the Goethe Institutes or the DRAD programs or the Humboldt Foundation and all that is always to bring societies together. And only by, by that <coughs> we will um, generate more tolerance. And uh, when you people have come to Germany and see my country, I mean, you have done a big step. A, a step many other young people or people in your age don't do. They, they sit in their country and they have their cliches about the other country. And, um, and the stereotypes, <laughs> and, uh, and I think it's important to, if they don't come, at least we should provide more programs there, let's say through Goethe Institutes <laughs> and, 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 and others, so at least they have a chance to have a, a little window to see you know, how Germany or Europe works. <laughs> and maybe then um, we can um, gain more, more interest, uh, they gain, gain more interest to come to, to, to see our country as well. So um, uh, here, here, here we, we, we try to do a lot. You mentioned the, uh, not the, the Arab League, but it's the Deutsche uh, uh, Arabische Freundschaftsgesellschaft. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a club. Um, uh, originated, uh, originally they, they wanted to do more business between uh, Europe or Germany and the Arab world. And then they asked me whether I would become uh, also a founding member. They, they started it. <coughs> and then I said, well, um, also, I'm, I have some business background too, but for me, the key to success is always uh, if, 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 um, if uh, we boost uh, educational uh, exchange programs. So that's why I said I, I will become a member, but we have to do a lot there. And that's what we do. I mean, we try to bring more Arab students to Germany as well, <coughs> and, and, and vice versa. So what we do with, with many other countries in the world, we have to do even more with the Arab world, with the Muslims as well, <coughs> to generate more, more, more interest. 
and and that works quite well. And the same, we I mean, we do a lot already also with Israel. So it's not only the Arab part, <coughs> but uh, but also Israel. And uh, uh, I mean, we have our uh, extremely good and close links with Israel. So I don't extra don't have to mention it extra. But um, I think we have to do a lot also on the on the in, in Arab countries to to uh, create more understanding between our two societies. Uh, is it because of this, perhaps, that uh, despite the fact that you spent a very important part of your life in the United States, you are on the record, uh, as far as I understand, that, that when you are asked whether you feel German or American, you <laughs> say that you feel mm -hmm. European, uh, rather than putting emphasis on, on your Germanship. Mm -hmm. Is it because you were born there or because you are now I involved in many multicultural activities within the parliament or outside the parliament that mm -hmm. you see the, the, the world different from a German who did not uh, got in who did not get in mm -hmm. touch with other cultures uh, maybe it's uh, a bit of all but uh, I think the, the the foundation of my uh, tolerance and openness was set by my parents um, first of all they both uh, spent um, well my father he had to go to war he was 15 he was a boy <coughs> and my grandfather they had to go through two wars and at the end of the war I mean my, my father more or less lost his youth to the war and and then he said well that's not a country I want to I want to live and I want to study somewhere else so he through first got into Switzerland but then he got a chance to go to the U.S. to first study and later became a, a professor for theology and, and philosophy. And in the U.S. he met my, my mother, it was at uh, Columbia University. Uh, and my mother, she comes from a poor family in uh, Schwäbisch Hall, that is uh, in the southern part of Germany. And it was due to a successful German uh, industrialist who gave a lot of scholarships to Germans, to young Germans. He wanted to get as many Germans out of, of, of the destroyed kind of Germany into a free world and so they should learn more about democracy and all these ideas. And, um, and, and, and so that's, that's how also both, both my parents are German, but they met in the U.S. and they started their family and they had their reproductive phase. I'm the youngest of five. And then they said, well, but the kids should not only see America, but also, also Europe and Germany. And, um, and so we more or less grew up also in Germany. <laughs> and, uh, and here, and my father, I, 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 he doesn't live anymore, but um, so often he, he taught us, you know, to really be tolerant. And he brought, uh, uh, you know, the world into our little home <laughs> in Germany. It's not a little home, it's an old medieval castle, but it's in a really <laughs> tiny little, in this tiny little uh, village. And, and, and it was so wonderful. And I, I remember he once, uh, there was, um, uh, it was during the Shah times and we had uh, students from Iran and there was some problems. And I think it was a, was a Persian princess, I don't know, <laughs> one or his sisters, or I don't know. And, and then we kids would we, go, go there and then, and then we were so uh, unhappy because she wouldn't wear a crown. And then the next time, <laughs> when we were, it was long, we must remember we were kids at first. Um, or, uh, or uh, you know, other, other people from all over the world. And, uh, and, uh, and he was extremely, extremely tolerant, always. And I remember when uh, I was one of our, I think a long, long uh, staff member who has been with us for many years, and he died and everybody said, oh, he had a lung, lung problem. And he said, no, Harold, he died on AIDS. <laughs> and then it was long ago, it was just the beginning of AIDS, but he would immediately, you know, talk very openly about it, say, well, here we are facing a new problem and, 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 and that's, you know, not just, um, you know, it, it was always this very, very open, open-minded uh, person, especially my father, my mother as well. He, my, my parents would have never tolerated if we would have talked negative about a friend without a good reason. I mean, if the friend would have beaten me up and he said, <laughs> and hit back, and then he said, okay, but, uh, but not because uh, for some uh, subjective uh, uh, reasons. He would uh, immediately uh, tell us, you know, that's not how, how you should live together. And uh, so it's, I think it's my, my, my parents who, who started it at least. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that's the most important, I think, that open-minded attitude from the outset. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lodbrecht, thank you very, very much for the lecture as well as the interview. I think we've all benefited greatly from your mm -hmm. insights and your perspectives. And we really appreciate the honor you gave our institute by coming here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful discussion, as, as usual, always too short. I'm, I'm sorry, and again, sorry that I came late. It was 
due to the traffic and uh, and I come back anytime you want me and thank you very much uh, and we're looking we forward to welcoming you back soon thank you thank, thank you, you very much, much. Thank you. Thank you.